to those players and the manager. That's fantastic stuff. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alain for Cert Play Gaming. This is the FIFA 23 Stevenage Career Mode. It is the Road to Glory with AD Bird Ride Season 3, Episode 77. When we finished the last episode, we finished the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. We beat Port Vale 3-0. Newcastle lost 3-2 to Chelsea. Manchester United swept aside Reading. And Spurs beat Nottingham Forest 3-1. And that, of course, means that we're in the hat for the semi-final draw, which has already taken place. And drum roll, because we have drawn Manchester United in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. And Chelsea will meet Spurs for a place in the final. Now, that episode will be... Um, that game will be in the next episode, in episode 78. Um, so make sure you stay on the channel and stay focused on this career mode because it's starting to heat up now. This is the big, uh, this is a big time now for us. Uh, Teddy Brooks, the prospect, has suffered a sprain knee injury. He's really missing for the final running to the season. Best of luck for him on rehabilitation and getting back to us. Coming up in today's episode, we take on Bounty in the final game of March. We'll take a look at the league table. And then we've got a big, big crunch game against Ipswich to kick off April, which could decide the title. And then we play Salford City at home in the second week of April. That concludes today's episode. Let's see how we get on. Let's get down to business. It's Barnsley, and we're away at Oakwell for this game. Some Stevenage fans travelled to see this one. And in many ways, we need to make sure we get a positive result in this game. The opening... Five minutes, you'll see the defence basically just condense themselves. Connell is going to come back to Connell. He's going to take a shot. It's blocked by James Wilden. He's going to come back to Connell again. Blocked by Drysdale. And then finally, Borthwick Jackson gets in and dispossesses Rossi. Some good defending there by us in the opening few minutes. And then on 14 minutes, O'Neill into Nichols. Nichols is going to cross this into Hardy. And Hardy on the spin. And a great save by Jack Walton to stop us from going a goal up. And then on 22 minutes, a counter-attack Nichols to Hardy, back to McCormick. And he plays in Ellis Taylor, the prospect who's on loan from Sunderland. A great chance on his favourite left foot, but he ends up putting it wide of the post. And Boothroyd can't quite believe that. He could have made a real name for himself there, Taylor. Alex, thank you very much. Half an hour in, it's going to come out to McCormick. He's going to take a shot, tipped over the crossbar athletically by Jack Walton. He's good at those, McCormick, just coming onto the ball from the edge of the box. And then O'Neill loses the ball, he stays down. And Aitchison into Benson and his near post shot turned away by Anderson he says no way I'm not conceding from that position Pier Gianni just stepped away from him allowed him the shot there and then just before half time we win the ball back O'Neill into McCormick McCormick chips it in and here's Hardy brings the ball down and out comes Walton and makes the save no danger now we end up going into the break, into the half-time, nil-nil, with everything to play for. This is a game that we could easily lose. Then just after half-time, into Hardy, has to be won, and it's not. I thought for sure he was going to score. Especially Hardy as well. Boothride can't quite believe that. And then Andri with 15 minutes left takes on his marker, the full back, takes on Rossi into Gilby and Gilby's going to knock this back to James Wilden. A lovely cross to the back post and Nichols brings it down and Walton comes out and makes the stop. And then five minutes left, Barnsley putting the pressure on, trying to win the ball and we... Eventually do get it back, it's a long clearance. And then look at this counter-attack. Kinsella into McCormick. McCormick's going to find Nichols on the left. And then Nichols is just going to chip this into the box. Norris. And then on to McCormick. And what a finish that is. 
A sensational strike by Luke McCormick. And what a way to indeed yourself to the Borough fans after his move from Bristol Rovers. That is a superb strike. The replay doesn't give justice to how much venom he put in that. It's a sweet connection. And it flew past Walton. 87 minutes. It's his fifth goal of the season, of course. Not all of them scored for us. And so that would be the full-time whistle. How important would that be in the title race? We really had to grind that one out. And that's what it's about when you're at the top of the table. We fought for those three points and a superb goal to win the game. All right, so some bad news. Liam O'Neill has suffered a sprained knee injury. He's out for four weeks. Um, this is obviously not good news, but we're going to have to rely now on Kinsler filling that position alongside Gilby with McCormick. Even if we play 4-2-3-1 or 5-3-2, it's going to be those three midfielders that we have to focus on uh, moving forward. Now, just take a quick look at the end of March after the Barnsley win. You can see Ipswich have a one-point lead over us, and we've got about seven games left to play. We are in second. A nice, healthy lead over Bolton. Wigan, Blackpool and Wickham are in the playoffs at the moment as things stand. Bristol Rovers, Barnsley, Fleetwood, Exeter, Colchester, Rotherham, Oxford and MK Dons in the mid-table. Down towards the bottom end, Forest Green Rovers, Bradford City, Burton Albion, Salford and then Shrewsbury, Stockport, Derby and Lincoln make up the bottom half. So, aside from Manchester United in the FA Cup semis, this is probably going to be the title decider. I say that, of course, there's still games left, but with both us and Ipswich going for the title, uh, we didn't think we'd be in this position. We just wanted to get promotion, but here we are. I'm going to make the best of it. And the press asking, Boothroyd, are you looking for more goals today after the 1-0 win against Barnsley? How are you going to approach us against uh, Ipswich Town? And he just says that we're going to have the same attitude that we always have. Our aim is to win the game. If we win it 1-0, great. If we win it 2-1, 3-1, 3-2, 4-3, at this point, it doesn't matter. We just have to make sure we don't lose. A danger man there, Turkish striker Malik Batmaz. He's been in good form this season, as well as Connor Chaplin, so it'll be a danger. There's McCormick. He scored the winner against Barnsley in the last game. And we are here at Portman Road as we take on Ipswich Town. Top of the table clash. And the opening five minutes is going to play into the box. Batmaz to Edwards and then Kamara's low shot kicked away. The follow-up header, no uh, strength on it by Chapman, but it was a good kick save initially by Anderson to keep it out. Ipswich applying the pressure in the opening 20 minutes and Dariva plays it into Kamara. Kamara into Batmaz, spins Bradbury and smashes it in past Anderson. The Tractor Boys hold the advantage now. We cannot let them get two or three goals in front. This is a great turn but Bradbury allows himself to be spun too easily there. He has to cover he has to get get behind him and make sure that he doesn't allow him to spin like that. Even if he fouls him on the edge of the box, it's too easy for Batmaz to do that. And then 10 minutes later, it's into Chaplin. Chaplin near post. And Anderson comes out to our rescue here. As Ipswich Town in the opening half hour running riot on our defence. Make some adjustments. And then um, James Wilding ran off the ball by Kyle Edwards. Edwards spins away from Drysdale. Great interception by Bradbury, but then his pass intercepted by Dariva. And then Kamara with a long-range effort. And a great save by Anderson to push it wide. You can see already the pressure between midfield and defence. And then five minutes before half-time, Hardy into Kinsella, Kinsella into McCormick, McCormick 
takes the, the ball on, holds off Burns, into Gilby, gets the ball back, and he slams it into the top corner, past Christian Walton, it is 1-1, and it is McCormick again, he is coming up clutch in the latter stages of this uh, campaign, and what a signing from A.D. Boothroyd, <coughs> a definite um, shoe-in replacement for Robbie Gotts, who departed for Middlesbrough, and at half-time, Ipswich won, Stevenage won, into the second half we go. Borthwick Jackson ran off the ball by Wes Burns, Dariva, wide to Chaplin, Chaplin into Batmas, Batmas back to Chaplin and then in, back into Burns, Burns is going to knock it back to Chaplin and then Chaplin into Kamara and Ka Kamara's shot pushed away by Anderson, they moved the ball so quickly in and around the penalty area. Great from Anderson to get across and then Five minutes after the interval, Liam Kinsella into Gilby. Gilby with a lofted through ball. Dariva intercepts but misjudges it. Gets robbed. Out comes Walton. And then it's a mistake. James Wilden nods the ball down and Hardy slams it into the net. I never thought that it would be a mistake that led to the um, go-ahead goal. Walton doesn't get a strong enough hand to it. He tries to fist the aerial ball. And then Ipswich obviously laying on the pressure here into Edwards. Parried away and then smacked away by a gumbo. As we're just basically clinging on here to the possible three points. Leif Davis, 66 minutes now. Kamara, he's going to play this in. Dariva. Shot blocked, and then a gumbo intercepts. I'm trying to clear it, and then Dariva takes the ball back. Takes the shot, pushed away by Anderson, and then headed away by a gumbo. Frantic defending. And then four minutes later, Kamara into Chaplin. Chaplin back to Batmaz. Batmaz takes the ball back into Chaplin. First time shot, and a great save by Anderson. 20 minutes left. Into Edwards, then into. Kamara back to Chaplin who sets up Kamara probably should have took the shot himself there Chaplin five minutes left to go Harness into Batmaz Batmaz with a shot from outside the box pushed wide by Anderson the goal we scored just gave us something to hang on to as it's basically all hands on deck and then a looping header just goes wide of the post. He flashed that wide of the post. He beat Anderson, but he just couldn't tuck it inside the far post there. So close. And we managed to hold on. Anderson played well in the second half. And we just about held on a superb victory. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, we move on to the final game against Salford. Alright, so the victories over Barnsley and Ipswich will be all in vain if we don't do our job here as we host Salford at Broad Hallway. Relegation threatened, Salford got off to a great start. Romeo wide to Bolton, Bolton picks him out. And a volley which is turned away by Chapman. He makes really good contact on this. And... Um, as I was saying, we have to be on our toes here because we know that in the most critical parts of the season, the game is going to give added attribute boosts to the weaker sides. Thankfully, on 28 minutes, McCormick threw ball to Laurent Talai and he actually scores against his former employers, celebrating no less. Uh, a little bit of shithousery there, uh, you don't mind it. Um, he's doing the business for us, I'm glad we picked this guy up. A great finish past Tom King. Nice connection on the volley. And then literally, two or three minutes later, they give the ball away. McCormick into Ellis Taylor, and Ellis Taylor takes on Leak, and then sends him for a Big Mac. Space opens up and he says, go on, then I'll take that. And bangs it into the top corner. And literally within three minutes, we had two goals up. Ellis Taylor, the prospect, 
Um, I like the look of this lad. I really do like the look of him. Um, if we manage to move one of the prospects on, it might be worth going in for him. Um, I like the way um, he runs with the ball. I like his dribbling and certainly like his shooting. I like when they connect with that, that shot and they get good lift. Uh, three minutes later, the ball's in the net at the other end. A predictable goal. We see this a lot. Um, Bolton picks out. Elias Romeo and he smashes it in low this seems to be sort of like a carbon copy of a lot of goals that the comp scores against you even though you know it's coming you can't do anything to stop it they have one striker up front and none of your centre backs pick him up they just go running out to the edge of the box um, so we're going at half time 2-1 a disappointing goal to concede um, and then a minute into the second half Simos picks out Callum Hendry, who really, really should score there. He tries to side foot it into the top corner, but ends up shooting wide. And then they do actually tie the game up. Get the game level. 52 minutes in. Counter attack as Simos plays it in. Sanderiz and Mark smashes it into the top corner. Um, another goal I'm disappointed in with here is because if you watch the replay, uh, Chapman, who's six foot eight, doesn't even like dive full stretch for it. I mean, obviously, he's last line of defence. We can't just constantly point the finger at him. But if he's diving full stretch at six foot eight, he saves that. And I, I'd like to think last year he would have saved it. McCormick then plays in to lie. Opportunity for his brace, and he takes it, smashing low to the bottom corner. And we're going to go with another celebration this time. Lovely movement by Talai, splits the defence through one on one, never any doubts. Lovely composure to just finish that off 3 2. Now, the problem is, as I mentioned before, can we then hold on to it? Because they seem more overpowered for a you know a relegation threatened team ball played in there defense just allows romeo a shot from the edge of the box just not tight enough a gumbo running around in circles and then 76 minutes kinsler into hoskins holds off o'brien plays it to borthwick jackson spots the run edge of the six yard box and standing captain Liam Kinsler wearing the armband runs to the edge of the six yard box and heads it into the bottom corner. It's a great finish from Kinsler. And with Liam O'Neill out, we're going to need this kind of contribution from him. It's a fantastic header. I think Hawkins would be proud of that one. He's not the tallest of guys, but what a fantastic leap that is to head it past King and that would be the final score four goals to two it wasn't about the defense today as you can tell uh, let me know in the comments what you think it was all about the offense Laurent Talai with two goals Taylor Ellis Taylor with a goal and Kinsler with a goal of his own all right thanks for watching today if you're enjoying this series consider watching more content by clicking on the playlist available at the end of this video also, why not consider subscribing? That way you don't miss any upcoming episodes. I'll see you guys back on Friday with episode 78. We've been drawn against the mighty Manchester United in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. And we also face Derby County and Exeter in the league. Thank you so much for your support. I'll see you guys soon. It's our lad for Set Play Gaming.